Hello again, this is Brother Sean, and I'd like to share with you a little bit about the monastic hub, the place where everything happens. But let's first just recap and let's just think back to when we had friends round. Where is the place in the house where most people are likely to congregate? Yes, you guessed right. It's the kitchen. That seems to be the hub of every home. And there's another old saying as well, that when your mother is alive, the family stay together. But what happens when your mother is no longer with you? There's a saying that the family disperse, and that may be true. But in the monastery, the hub is the heart, and the heart is wherein lies your truth. But let's just reflect on why many of us have embraced lay monasticism within the modern world, and why we've chosen to opt to remain in our monastery without walls, our own home, as opposed to entering a conventional monastery where one has to leave family and friends and resign one's job in society. What is the attraction of embracing the monastic life, especially in context of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans? It is my gut belief, it's an, in an intuitive belief, that for the interfaith movement to come together and trust one another and feel safe with one another and move away from all the historical injuries, woundedness, there has to be an element of trust, hasn't there? So within our community we have friends who support us with their best wishes and their prayers. But we have also, which is very important, there are a group of us who've embraced monastic life as lay monastics living in the world, but not of it. And we do this from our own home by living an ordinary life, a simple life, where we're detached in our heart from the dramas of the world. And our primary focus is to honor God, the God of many faiths. So when we become a monastic, we actually find the hub of our spiritual home. And in that hub, there is truth. And in that truth, there is a resonance with what the Divine is asking of us because you know unless we're called to live this life our efforts are in vain it takes a special person to say no doesn't it? and if you're living in the world and you're living this life on your own or in a small group there are many distractions aren't there? Take, for example, your family home. If you're married with children, you can well appreciate the distractions you have with the children wanting to be picked up from school or taken to school, making sure they've got their lunchbox, making sure that everything's okay, making sure they're safe, safe from predators, making sure that the home is comfortable, making sure that when friends call, all is well. Here in, the, here in our little monastery, we have similar distractions, but without the children. And we have to make responsible choices. Do we sit as a couch potato in front of the telly? Or do we use our time constructively and wisely? Do we use the talents that God has given us? As lay monastics, as members of the Teo community, we live an ordinary life. Some of our members, unlike myself who's now enclosed, they keep down a full-time job. They go out to work. But when they come home, 
they've shut that door, then they begin their relationship in a profound way with their God Goddess. They begin their spiritual paths through peace, silence. They may have friends round, they may have a time of meditation together. It's not all serious. It's quite joyful really. But the the reason why I believe we were brought together wasn't to make waves and create a stir in the established religions. It was to offer the interfaith community a hand of friendship and say that those of us who have embraced the monastic life have done so because God has asked us and we voluntarily and freely give up our heart for the advancement of the interfaith community. So we offer our lives in service, in spiritual service, so that our prayer life is used by God, that the daily humdrum, the monotonous routine, every day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year, will have a positive knock-on effect, and it will touch lives. It will touch lives who may be hardened to change. It may touch lives in the established religions who are afraid of change. There's a reluctance, maybe an unwillingness, to come out of their comfort zone. So the hub of the interface dialogue has got to be prayer. Because in every established religion, whether it's, Baha whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, you have the monks. You have the men and women who either live together or alone as hermits. And they offer their lives to God. And they offer their lives for peace. So we within the Teo family who live the monastic life in our monastery without walls, do so freely, with no pressure, no coercion. So we're using our free will to surrender our heart for you. And in that surrendering, we are asking God to bless the interfaith family, to bless the leaders and the members, and that we will make a determined effort to let go of the historical woundedness and embrace the miracle of this present moment. So prayer plays an important part and prayer isn't just about kneeling down before God or facing Mecca so many times a day to Allah. In our morning offering, when we begin our day, we offer our day. We offer our prayers, our works, our joys, our sufferings, our disappointments, our sadness. We offer our worries and our concerns. We offer the vision. In union with every act of divine worship and praise from the four corners of the earth, from the whole interfaith community. And we do that because we're holding the whole interfaith family in love to God, thanking God for continued reassurance that the spirit of truth is, is with us, thanking God that prayer will be answered one day where many of different faiths will come together and will trust one another and will kneel down before the one God one faith and give praise. It's a beautiful concept, but for it to be taken seriously, there needs to be a hub, a spiritual kitchen where people of like mind can come together and share their dream and pray. Why not join us? Why not come and see? Thank you for listening. May God reward you. May he bless you.